I'm going to talk about uh, our joint work with Maria Mirzahani about asymptotics of Gabe Peterson volumes of modular spaces. For Ma Mariam, the motivation to study asymptotics of the volumes was like follows. She was interested in the question, how a random Riemann surface of large genus looks like. And uh, it was natural to understand randomness relative to the normalized Vale peterson uh, volume form. Vale peterson metric is a natural Hermitian metric on the modular space of uh, curves with marked points. So let me start with the definition um, denoted by MGN, the modular space of Riemann surfaces, or which is the same smooth complex algebraic curves of genus G with N labeled marked points. The tangent space to the modular space at uh, the point represented by a curve C with marked points X1 to Xn can be naturally identified with the space of harmonic Beltrami differentials. What is a uh, harmonic Beltrami differential? That's a harmonic zero one form on the punctured surface, the punctured curve with coefficients in the holomorphic tangent bundle to the curve. That are square integrable with respect to the hyperbolic metric on the curve, on the function curve. Uh, this space carries a natural scalar product, which is called the Hodge scalar product. And uh, yeah, that's the way it's defined. Uh, maybe I'll comment here that uh, this integral here is taken over the curve and the integrand is nu times nu bar, which is a function that is integrated with respect to the hyperbolic area form on C. So we have a scalar product on each tangent space, which depends smoothly on points in the modular space, and therefore it gives rise to a Hermitian metric on the modular space MGN. Uh, this uh, metric is called Dale Peterson metric. It was introduced by Andre Weil, and it's called Weil Peterson because, uh, in the theory of automorphic forms, the whole scalar product is called the Peterson scalar product. Uh, what are the main properties of this metric? Uh, first of all, this metric is scalar, that was proven by Andre Weil. Well, uh, I should have told that before that all objects are understand in the sense of all defaults. So I won't mention it anymore. Um, Will Peterson volume of the modular space MGN uh, is finite. That follows from a, an estimate of Hover Mason. Uh, the metric itself as a singularity at the boundary, which uh, is mild, or rather mild, and the, the total volume is fine. And uh, the Will Peterson Keller form, a symplectic form, extends as a closed L2 current to the Delin Manfred compactification of the modular space MG. Uh, and it represents the, uh, some cohomology class that we denote by omega WP in square brackets. Uh, we choose the normalization of the uh, Hodge scalar product in such a way that uh, the class of the Will Peterson form is, uh, is a rational number. It's not an integer because mg and bar is an order form. So we can try to compute volumes using the homology of 
the convectified uh, modular space. So now I'll tell a few words about intersection theory on MGN bar. First of all, uh, let me let me define the so-called tautological classes. Uh, for that, consider n line bundles L sub i over MGN bar, such that uh, the uh, fiber of this uh, line bundle L sub i. So sorry, I missed the subscript here. Uh, is isomorphic to the cotangent line to C to the curve at the ith mark point. This gives us uh, a line bundle on the MGN bar, and we denote its first churn class by psi i. Um, we can also define more general tautological classes. We will need the first Mumford class. Is by definition, the push forward of the square of the class psi with number n plus one relative to the forgetful map from MGN plus one bar to MGN bar. Uh, this forgetful map simply forgets the marked point with number n plus one. So the fibers of this uh, projection are just curves with marked points. And then, at least was shown by Walker, uh, the, the cohomology class of the Weyl Peterson metric of the Weyl Peterson Keller form just coincides with the first Manfred class kappa one. So we can now use intersection theory to compute Will Peterson volumes. To do that, uh, let me introduce the Witten conservation potential, or how Witten called it, the total free energy of two-dimensional topological gravity. This is a formal power series of infinitely many variables, T0, T1, and so on. Uh, that is given by the formula here. That's a generating function for the intersection numbers of tautological psi classes on the uh, modular space MGN bar. And uh, the coefficients, the integrals over the modular spaces are non-zero if and only if uh, the sums of powers di is just the dimension of the modular space or 3g minus 3 plus n. The generating series satisfies the string equation and Kortelec de Vries hierarchy or equivalent to the system of Vera Sora constraints and is uniquely determined by either of these two sets of equations. That's the famous Witten's conjecture uh, that was first proven by Konsevich and then several other proofs appeared by uh, Okunkov, Pantheri, Pandir, Kazaran, Lando, Miza, Hani, and others. Uh, I must notice here that Miza, Hani's proof of Witten's conjecture was very special. All other proofs uh, used some kind of combinatorics. Uh, for instance, Konsevich himself used uh, ribbon graphs, Okunkov and Kharipanda used random trees, Kazarian and Lando used uh, um, Hurwitz numbers in their proof, and Mirzahani's proof was purely in terms of uh, hyperbolic geometry. It followed from the careful study of the hyperbolic flow 
on Riemann surfaces. <clears throat> so uh, let me show how this system of equations like. So that's that's the string equation, uh, and uh, we call it like the phrase hierarchy looks like this, uh, where R's are differential polynomials called Kelly van Zicke polynomials, and they are defined recursively. So that's an infinite system of rather complicated partial differential equations. It is equivalent to the set of Virasori constraints. Uh, these are equation, equations of this form, where m ranges from minus 1, 0, 1, and so on to infinity. And uh, the operator with uh, index m is given by this formula. These operators, uh, Lm, they obey the Virasoro commutation relation uh, that is written here. And that's why they're called Virasoro constraints. The two th sets of uh, equations are equivalent. Both of them determine the written conservation potential uniquely. But uh, it's rather uh, hard to uh, compute intersection numbers using these equations. Uh, the programs work very slow, and uh, the, the intersection numbers can be computed for a limited number of uh, sets of indices. Uh, how Will Peterson volumes and pathological intersection numbers are related? Will Peterson volumes can be expressed directly in terms of the intersection numbers of psi classes. So let's first consider the genus expansion of the written concept potential. We just write it as a sum of contribution over all genera, ranging from zero to infinity. And let us denote by phi sub g, the generating function uh, of the Dale Peterson volumes. Then there is a formula that relates uh, the two generating functions namely the generating function for the Peterson volume in genus G is a specialization of the written concept potential for the special values of parameters T. So you get the generating function of the Peterson volume volumes if you put in FG T0 to be X, T1 to be 0, and uh, T with index i equal to minus one to the i over i minus one factorial. So there is such a formula. And let's now discuss asymptotics of uh, real Peterson volumes as g tends to infinity and then fixed. That was done in our joint paper with Maria. First, let me say that uh, following Mariam's request, uh, I computed some number of Will Peterson volumes for a rather large G, for G up to 75. And uh, this numerical data allowed me to conjecture the following asymptotic expansion that is written here. So there is the uh, factorial term to g factorial 
uh, there is an exponential term, 2 over pi squared to the g. Then there is a power term, g to the n minus 7 over 2. Uh, then there is a constant term. And uh, there is an asymptotic expansion in inverse powers of g as g becomes large. So let me comment on this formula. Um, the factorial term was first estimated by Penner, and his estimate wasn't uh, that bad. It was quite close to the, the correct number 2G factorial. Uh, that was first uh, proven by Sam Groshevsky by refining an argument of Penner. He did that for and the number of marked points equal to one. And soon Schumacher and Trapani uh, generalized Khrushchevsky proof to all values of n. Uh, then Marianne um, found, she, sorry, she proved actually that the exponential term and uh, together with her, we uh, proved other terms like the uh, power term, and uh, we proved the existence of uh, asymptotic expansion in the inverse powers of G. What remained not proven is this constant term, which to be elusive. Uh, numerically, it was computed with a high accuracy, but there is still no proof of this constant term. So, uh, actually, in our paper, we computed even more general intersection numbers, but that's a good example. And uh, uh, I can tell a little more about the coefficients in the expansion. These coefficients Cn with superscript i are polynomials in n of degree 2i with coefficients in the uh, ring of polynomials generated by pi to the minus two and pi squared. And actually numerical data uh, suggests that these coefficients, the coefficients of the polynomials Cn with superscript i actually uh, are polynomials in inverse squares of pi. So here I give an example of the first uh, such polynomial for any n, it's uh, well, it's quadratic with coefficients uh, that are rational, uh, that are polynomials in pi squared inverse with the rational coefficients. Uh, I should say that the proofs were computationally hard. They used uh, hard asymptotic analysis. And uh, well, that was uh, some, some serious work. Um, so it may be instructive to compare uh, the growth of Bill Peterson volumes in a different regime when n, the number of marked points, tends to infinity and the genus remains fixed. That was actually done by uh, Manin and myself, and the asymptotics look similar but still uh, has some.
some special features, like in the case when g tends to infinity and then is fixed, uh, the first term in the asymptotic is uh, factorial, it's n factorial, n is the number of marked points on the curve, then there is, a, there is an exponential term, then there is a power term, and uh, an asymptotic series in inverse powers of n. So uh, this power, uh, sorry, this exponential term can be computed explicitly. The constant c is given by this formula. It's minus two over x naught times j naught prime of x naught, where x naught is the first positive uh, zero of the Bessel function j naught. And the coefficients uh, b i g are effectively computable. So they can be computed, but that, that's, that's not an easy task. In low genus, one can get uh, more explicit formulas. Uh, just put y of x to be the uh, second derivative of the generating function phi naught of Pale Peterson volumes in genus zero. Then the inverse function to y of x is explicit. It's minus square root of y times j naught prime of two square roots of y, where j naught is again the Bessel function j naught. And uh, it's given by an explicit series. Inverting this series uh, in that, we get the second derivative of the generative function of genus zero volumes. Uh, for g equal one, there is also a simple formula. Uh, the generating function in zero one uh, is one over 24 times logarithm of y prime of x. And for g larger or equal to two, the generating function fgx uh, can be written as a homogeneous differential polynomial in y prime of x, whose coefficients are effectively computable. As I said uh, before, the case when g tends to infinity and then is fixed required a hard asymptotic analysis that was performed by Mirza Haini and myself. And uh, this case when uh, n tends to infinity and g is fixed, uh, is proven using different techniques. It uses uh, the standard asymptotic analysis of Bessel functions. And this is in a way simpler, though the constants that appear in the decomposition are somehow uh, more complicated, like this constant C, which is expressed in terms of the Bessel function or the coefficients bg with superscripts i. Uh, well, so that's more or less all that I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, please ask them. Any comments, remarks?
So if there are no comments or remarks or questions, then we close our special session dedicated to the International Women in Mathematics Day. And uh, thanks everybody for attending. <laughs> And special thanks for ladies, uh, mathematicians who attend uh, this colloquium. Yes, Thank and you. special thanks to Elise. Special thanks to Elise. Yes. For giving a talk. <laughs>